What is up, Buck? I'm Doug with Dini in the garage. This is the computer out of a Dodge Durango, and today we're gonna figure out what else it goes in. We might also figure out how to clean it before we put it in. Since some of y'all might need some background, and here it is. This behind me is a 2001 Jeep Grand Cherokee WJ. It has skim security key immobilization module, and recently it was giving me an issue, and I said in a video, I'm gonna get rid of the skim on this Jeep. It's not hard. You take your computer out, you send it away to somebody who knows computers, and they take the skim out. You come back, you have to remove your skim module. That's not what we're talking about today. One of you left a comment on that video. They said, hey bud, older Dodges with the 4.7, then you skim. So that would mean if I take the computer from an older Dodge that had a 4.7 and I put it in my Jeep, it should power the 4.7, it should power the body control module, which will do everything else, but I won't have skim. Put up that video and I put up a reel on the same thing and I got a ton of comments telling me exactly the answer, whether or not it would work. Beautiful, now I don't have to try it myself. Problem is, they were split 50-50. Half of you said, I had an old Dodge, it had skim, I've tried this myself, it won't work, you're an idiot. The other half said, I've tried this myself a number of times, it works perfect, you're an idiot for not doing it sooner. But there's the only way to figure that one out, isn't there? So I went to the junkyard, some of y'all might have seen that video. If you'd like to see the video where I pulled this ECU, I'll leave a link where links go, but we grabbed ourselves one out of a 2001 Durango with the 4.7 liter. Let's get that bad boy cleaned up and jam it in. That's the only way we're gonna get to the bottom of this. First and foremost, we're gonna clean this guy up a little bit because it literally looks like something was blowing oil directly onto the connector and it was all getting in there. I actually had it laying face down on the seat of my Jeep and when I picked it up, there was a pool of oil where this was. So I'm gonna use a little bit of brake clean on the outside of this bad boy to just break up some of the junk around the screws. Goodness, that grime is thick. These are a T15, I believe. There we go. I don't know if this ECU is even gonna work. I should have done a little more testing in the yard. Look at the oil that wants to come out of this thing. I've never seen anything like this. Oh my goodness. Have you ever seen an ECU with that much engine oil? Ay, ay, ay. That is so much oil. I, I can't believe it. I can't believe it's still coming out. You got a, uh, about a cup of oil in this ECU. Anyway, back to disassembly now. I've got the screws out, and what you basically want to do is take a heat gun and run it around the perimeter. It's going to help you melt the glue so that this whole thing will pop right off. There we go. We can sneak the metal bit out. And there you are. You're staring down the dress of your ECU. Is this one gonna work? I have no idea. I've never seen so much oil inside an ECU. We're gonna go a little willy-nilly with contact cleaner here. Mineral spirits would be another option. We need something that'll break up the oil. Let's see, it's mostly clean. Yeah, it is, that's good. Try to inspect it for anything broken or missing or corroded. And I don't see anything. 
Not that I totally know what I'm looking for. Gotten most of the oil off. We confirmed that with the Q-tip here, which is good. All right, let's give it a little hit with some compressed air without going crazy. Now, you could obviously go a lot further with this thing, but uh, even if it works, I'm probably not leaving it in my Jeep. This is just proof of concept. So let's slap this thing back together. I'm not gonna re-glue it or anything. I don't have a lot of high hopes that this is even really a viable ECU anymore, given the amount of oil that came out of it, but let's try to reintroduce the skeleton and then uh, bolt one side down first. Don't try to do both sides at once or you'll end up mangling the metal and probably breaking something inside. Try to bang my corner back into place here. Our ECU's back together and significantly less oily on the inside, though probably still oilier than it ought to be. Alrighty friends, everything's set real quick. Here's some things that people suggested might happen. Uh, some people suggested it would work perfectly, but without the skim. Some people suggested it would work exactly the same as my Jeep computer, meaning having skim, no difference. Some people said it'll work, but I will need a VIN re, um, programming which that's true if it works it will need a VIN reprogramming because this VIN on this computer on this ECU is for a 2000 Durango but that shouldn't prevent it from running some people said your gauges might not work some people said stuff like memory seat might not work the reason I'm here is because I want to know for sure I got just enough stuff moved out of the way that I could cram the Dodge computer in front of mine it's all hooked up I discoed my skim unit just to be sure friends without further ado Whoa. Waiting for parent. Hold on. I don't believe it. Okay, there's the skim key uh, code, the skim light rather. It's the key with the X through it. But this Jeep is working. Let's see if it'll move. Day. Memory seat disabled. Okay, that's fair. Got to put it up by myself. We've got to check gauges because none of the gauges are working. None of them. We've got to check engine and I've got a skim key code. But will this thing move? So far, so good. It's pretty much already proved it because when you, you don't have the right key but your skim is working, it shuts it down in two seconds. It, I think it kills the fuel pump, right? This is crazy. <laughs> I mean, it runs, got no gauges. Runs, shifts, everything seems fine. Evic works. Radio works, y'all heard that before. I'll be dipped. There was only one guy, one guy that said it'll work, but your gauges won't work. And I was like, all right, that's not what's gonna happen, but whatever. Alrighty, friends, that is a result. Let's centralize all the information we have here because that's what this video is about. This is not an entertainment video, this is science. I should be wearing a lab coat if we're being honest here. Here's what I did. I took a 2001 Jeep Grand Cherokee WJ with a 4.7 liter V8. It is a limited Grand Cherokee, okay? In that Jeep, I put the computer from a 2000 Dodge Durango, also with the 4.7 liter V8. The engine started with the key, started right up, no questions asked, did not shut back down. Transmission shifted, there was no evidence that the drive line was in any way unhappy. I was able to drive it around, I was able to park it, shift through the gears. Everything essential seems to work. What did not work? The memory seats did not work, in fact, it didn't just not work, it was able to say up on the EVIC, memory seat disabled. Keyless entry also didn't work. I, I checked that off camera. Not surprised though, if your memory seat's not working, it's usually your keyless won't work either in the WJs because they're holding hands. The big problem, the gauges didn't work. Nothing on the gauge, no fuel gauge, no tachometer, speedometer, temp, oil pressure, none of that. All I had on the gauge was a fuel 
light, check engine light, check gauges light. Now, why were those on? Well, the check gauges light were on because none of the gauges were working, and the fuel light was on because it was registering empty because you were getting no response. Why was there a check engine light? Because I didn't have one on before. I suspect that's from the VIN mismatch. I knew that that was definitely going to be an issue. Nobody was um, debating that. Additionally, after I hooked up the ECU, but before I turned that key to turn it on the first time, I disconnected my skim unit from underneath the um, steering column. Because there are some instances where you can have a computer that doesn't have skim or the skim's not fully programmed, but when it senses a skim unit, it triggers that part of the ECU and now you have problems. If you ever get an ECU for one of these Jeep Grand Cherokees that has skim deleted, it's not deleted, it's disabled. And if you ever connect it to an active skim unit, it will learn that skim unit. So I disconnected my skim. I have no idea if that was necessary or not, but that kind of just proves the skim was disconnected from the Jeep everything was still running. We did get a skim light. That's the key with the through it. After about 30 seconds, it was not immediate and it didn't do anything. When the light came on, the Jeep didn't start running rough. It didn't try to shut it down, nothing. If you don't know, skim shuts down. I can't remember if it's ignition or fuel. I wanna say it's ignition. I think it just kills spark. So you're not going anywhere. Or it might be your fuel pump. Either one though. It, it's definitely spark. It doesn't die out like a fuel pump doesn't matter. It was not killing whatever it needed to kill. The Jeep was drivable. So did this work? Yes, it worked. This absolutely worked. The whole point was if I take this computer and I put it in a Jeep that has like a skim issue, say you had a bad skim module or say I lost the key for that Jeep and I was trying to start it with a different key, it'll now work. It will now work. Skim is no longer an issue on those Jeeps. It presents some other issues, the gauges, the memory seat, keyless entry. Um, so personally, I'm not going to drive it around like that. I'm going to get rid of skim another way. Eric is actually working on learning how to do that. He has a uh, HP tuner or something. I don't know. I'm not a computer guy, but Eric is, and he's working on deleting skim for me from that. And then hopefully it's a service we can offer to you guys too. But uh, I'm going to keep that computer on a shelf though. If I'm ever in a situation where I need that Jeep to move right now and the skims give me an issue or something, that is a viable option. If you were to, let's say, buy a WJ, I hear this a lot. People will buy a basket case WJ from somebody and come to find out that the whole reason it wasn't running was skim. What's interesting to me is only one of you told me, yes, it'll work, but you're gonna have a check engine light, your gauge won't work. One of you, out of the thousands of comments I got on the last video and the junkyard video and the reels I put up, one of you knew what was gonna happen. Everyone else was at least in some to some extent wrong, but that's why this video is awesome. I'm super excited to have this information. So leave me a comment down in the squawk box. Y'all ever tried this? Or have you tried a slightly different, you know, maybe a different year Dodge and a different year Jeep and it did work or it didn't work or different things worked? Because not only do I want to know, but there's going to be people down in the comments. I guarantee this is what you're going to see in the comments for this video. All right, your 01 worked with a 2000. I can get my hands on a 2001. Is that going to work in my 03? Personally, I have no idea. Maybe some of y'all do. So leave me a comment down in the squawk boxes. If you like the video, like the video. That's just common sense. Subscribe to the channel. Maybe go check out my website, monkeywithatoolbox.com. We are still taking pre-orders for the four liter tribute hoodie for the last run of 2024, uh, hoping they ship out on December 15th, all designed to get to you before Christmas. Great gift for yourself, great gift for the Jeeper in your life. I got nothing else on this one. I wanna thank you all for coming along with me. And I just wanna say real quick, I know I, I talked a lot about the comments I got on this and how some of them were less polite than others, but I appreciate every single one of them. I love all of y'all and all your comments, even the illiterate ones, even the really mean ones that kind of make me cry a little bit inside, just a little bit, just, just this much. Thanks so much for your info on this. If y'all had not left me so many comments, I may never have decided to test this. And we may never know. We may have never known. Thanks so much for watching. I cannot wait to see y'all on the next one.